Hello and welcome to Alara and Freddo's podcast number two, where we're going to be reading some um, Elder Scrolls fanfic. Um, before we get started, I just want to let people know that I'm going to be taking a short break from ESO. I don't know whether it's going to be for a month or three months or whatever, but I'm, I'm just feeling a bit burnt out with the game, so I'm taking a short break. And I think Freddo has a little announcement too. Um... Yes, I have an announcement. <laughs> Be- been a bonehead person I saw house in a uh, Friday, I believe it was. Um, thank you for listening and thank you for becoming my first fan. <laughs> right. Uh, let the cringe begin. <laughs> let the pain begin. Yeah. Before we start, just a disclaimer. Um... By bad fanfics, we mean uh, funny ones. Obviously, these are more the way arrived can grow and stuff. Um, not everyone's a great writer or anything, and we're not reviewing them as on like big blockbuster novels. But um, yeah, just a bit of fun at the end of the day. Yeah, just... exactly. We don't mean to diss anybody who wrote these. In fact, we love the people that wrote these because some of them are still really funny. <laughs> Take this as um a compliment. Constructive criticism. Take it as a compliment <laughs> that we chose yours, but there is millions of them online, and we literally have like four each. So yeah. Yeah. So let's um let's start okay. with the Lara's. Yeah. So uh, the first one I'm reading. Um, well, I'm not going to be able be able to read all of this because it says so far it has fifty chapters. So yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'm just going to read it for a couple of chapters. It's called A Daedra Named Desire by Mackie96. And I'm going to put links to all of the fanfics in the description below. So you can go and read them yourself. Because yeah, this one especially is very long. And it says a chapter warning. Vomiting, hangovers, alcoholism, public urination, leering, undressing with eyes. <laughs> uh, chapter one. I can tell this is going to be fun. <laughs> what the hell's leering? I've got to look up that. What leering. is leering? Leering is like looking at somebody in a kind of pervy way. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can tell this is going to be very interesting. <laughs> Chapter 1. Hangovers and Headsmen. The Daedric Prince Sanguine, whose spear was hedonistic revelry, debauchery and passionate indulgences of darker natures, was currently suffering from the worst hangover in his entire existence. Normally, he never had to face the consequences of his numerous misadventures, one of the advantages to being a resident of oblivion. He knew them, naturally, but had yet, but had yet until he'd woken that bright, sunny morning to have ever experienced the common after-effect of a night of heavy drinking. And after it, and after having existed in a wretched state of pure unnatural decadence for who knows how many millennia, his headache was of truly magnificent and epic proportions. <laughs> after vomiting for almost ten minutes straight, much to the disgust of passerby, Sanguine sat on the muddy ground by a small wooden home, trying to remember how he had ended up in such a sorry state. The events this of the love <laughs> Pardon? This is why you don't go past him with my leg bow. <laughs> the events of the last several weeks, however, currently escaped him. All he knew was that he currently, in his human guise, his head felt ready to explode, he smelled like an open cesspool, and most alarmingly, he seemed unable to use his daedric powers to simply teleport away from his unwanted condition. As he sat with his head leaning against a somewhat cool surface of the wooden frame house, he watched without really seeing what was in front of him. He could almost feel the tension in the air, or maybe that was just his head throbbing like the inside of a drum at this point he didn't know or care, and watched as the villagers gathered on their re- respective porches 
talking in hushed, concerned tones. Here and there, a few red, a few red and steel encased imperials ran around. The only ones excited and apparently pleased. You overheard one mention prisoners. That would explain the area they were cleaning just in front of the small tower and the headsman's block. So someone was getting executed. Sanguine snorted, then groaned as the action caused his head to ache even more. At least it wasn't going to be a boring morning, he mused. Slowly the sound of carriages approaching managed to find its way past his aching headache. The people nearby began to buzz as the tension grew. Some were excited, others decidedly less so. Sanguine was more interested in musing about his current predicament. As one of the carts carrying prisoners rolled past him, he felt a familiar tug inside his mind. He quickly looked over at those inside the wagon passing in front of him. Though her head was down, he saw the white blonde hair pulled into a messy braid. It was hauntingly familiar, demanding his attention, escalating the tugging sensation to a pull, to a hard pull, as vague memories brought back feelings of longing and warmth. Somehow she was involved in his current predicament. And she was currently with a group being herded towards the headman's block. Sanguine tried to scramble to his feet, only for the world to suddenly tilt and knock him back on his ass. One of the imperial <laughs> one of the imperial guards looked down at him in disgust, and Sanguine managed a somewhat graceful middle finger for the man's efforts. His second attempt to get to his feet was somewhat more stressful. Though his legs trembled at having to uphold his weight, everything was wrong, and Sanguine didn't like wrong. He liked pranks, he liked drinking, he liked sex and drugs and revelry. <laughs> He's a badass, basically. He was a very <laughs> naughty, naughty boy. <laughs> and more than anything, he liked it when some, when somehow he managed to combine all of the above into one giant fun instance of pure chaos. Those were the best times. Now, however, more than anything, he needed answers. Once again, he attempted to teleport back to oblivion. After all, he could simply leave and go back to normal. Answers were import weren't important. It had to be Pardon? I'm, tr I'm trying to work out, because I'm thinking this is probably in Helgen, and this is probably the start of Skyrim, the Dragon Ball. Yeah, it seems and like it. probably going to come. It seems like it is to me as well. That's how I think it's going. He had had his share of drunken adventures that he couldn't rightly recall in the morning. It usually made for grand stories later. However, he couldn't teleport. He couldn't teleport. He could... F Have I read that bit? For whatever reason, he was... Sorry, I've completely lost where I've got to. A sanguine swore lightly, hitting his clenched fist against the pillar that he leaned against. He was surprised and a little alarmed to feel pain. Unless it was for a pleasureful con con conquest, Sanguine was usually incapable of feeling pain. Glancing around with a worried expression, Sanguine rubbed the injured spot, suddenly feeling very vulnerable and very much not liking it. As the prisoners were called one by one, he, learned f he leaned forward, trying to get a better view of the young woman who still sat inside the carriage. Not that she, was, not that she wasn't a sight. Sanguine grinned lecherously as he eyed her rather lovely figure <laughs> oh, in those gosh. thin rags she wore, left yes, so yes. little to the imagination, but hid enough to keep a Daedric prince leering. <laughs> He heard a sound of disgust and saw the same guard looking at him. Apparently he'd been luring a bit too hard. However, that girl was somehow a part of what had happened to him. So he had to, so he did the best to smile charmingly at the guard. Uh, I'm confused right now because I don't understand how this guy's talking. <clears throat> Scuss me. Scuss me. Sanguine slurred terribly. That girl over there ish a friend of mine. I don't know why he's talking about like this. Well, he's drunk. Ish a friend of mine. <laughs> Shut up, wretch, the guard snarled. Sanguine pouted. Apparently even his daedric ability to charm was gone. That meant he'd have to rely on his natural abilities. In other words, he was completely screwed. Sanguine wasn't one to take being overlooked down. Being looked down on lightly, however, no matter his current state, he was still a daedric prince, one of the lords who ruled over his own vast realm in oblivion. If he wanted, he could destroy all of those before him without any effort. 
Determined, he stepped forward to shove his worthless soldier out of the way and stride over to the girl. And then he immediately stepped back into place as the soldiers casually riddled a certain prisoner with arrows. That looked rather painful. <laughs> yeah, this is that's um, this is definitely the Skyrim one because that's the, yeah, the guy from Rorikstead. Yeah, <laughs> Rorikstead. I'm from Rorikstead. You're not gonna take me. <laughs> Wait, you there, step forward. Sanguine turned his attention back to the lineup. Apparently it was Who the girl's turn. Are you? Sa Sanguine Sanguine's worry began to mount. If she died, he knew how long he'd be stuck here like this. The idea of that inconvenience made him fidget uncomfort uncomfortably. Or maybe that was just his bladder letting him know he really need he really needed relieving. <laughs> Who are you? The guard asked the girl. Sanguine was wondering the same thing, though he had many other questions, such as, were you born with those curves, or did Debella bless herself bless you? And, did we have sex? Please tell me we had lots of sex. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Mar Marida, the girl answered. Have Meridia? <laughs> no, just Marida, without the Oh, I thought you said Meridia the last part, what the fuck? <laughs> The girl answered, her voice quiet but clear. <laughs> there, was, there was no sign of fear in her voice, although her bound hands were clenched tightly against her stomach. Sanguine racked his mind, but other than his unhelpful imagination comparing her to Meridia, and then picturing Meridia in that sparse clothing with that kind of arse, he had nothing. <laughs> You've picked a bad time to come home, kinsman, the guard shouted genuinely sad then turned to the hard-faced woman standing behind him captain what should we do she's not on the list forget the list she goes to the block <laughs> for a half second sanguine harbored the hope that the girl would be allowed to go free if so it would be easy enough to catch up with her later maybe charm her into giving him some answers as well as forget the list she goes to the block balls Sanguine watched her slowly join the other armoured soldiers, waiting to be executed, feeling his stomach drop into his boots. He couldn't get answers from a dead woman. As he watched, his mind sluggishly unable to come up with anything. His, through his post-drunken haze, he saw the very first soldier lose their head. Then the captain turned and sneered at the girl. Next, the Norden rags. Oh, come on, Sanguine burst out. That old frick guy ish right there take him to the nest i don't know what this even means unfortunately nobody seemed interested in listening to the perfectly sound advice coming from the random drunk guy leaning at a 45 degree angle against the side of a porch <laughs> overhead however off in the distance sanguine clearly heard something else his mouth snapped shut and sweat beaded on his forehead as the rest of the crowd glanced around in mild but ultimately unconcerned interest. Dragon! Sanguine oh. felt his fear cheerful. Only one creature made that sound, and it had the nasty habit of not liking Daedra. A lot. To the point of eating them sometimes. Even if he couldn't die, or at least Sanguine's anxiety not so helpfully supplied, normally Daedra didn't die, he had no desire to face down such a creature. Desperately, he began looking for a way to escape. As the girl, Merida, walked bravely forward, her chin held high despite the slowness of her steps, Sanguine felt torn between wanting answers and wanting to flee. However, almost all of the homes and walls were made of wood. Beautiful, flammable wood. Only a few spaces were stone, and all of them were currently closed up and blocked by Imperial soldiers, who would most definitely take objection with a drunk trying to get into them. The girl sank to her knees and Sanguine found himself almost frantic. Just what in the name of oblivion was going on? <laughs> a little less than ten seconds later, Sanguine was thrown back several feet and landed heavily on his side as Aladdin, worldy to the firstborn of the Akatos, began his attack. If nothing else, Sanguine no longer had to worry about his overfull bladder anymore. It was most definitely empty now. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> As people fled and ran, screaming for cover, a certain white gold flash caught Sanguine's eye. The girl lived, 
her head still very much attached to her shoulders. Now he just had to catch up to her and get answers. By running across the village that was certainly currently on fire while flaming hot rocks rained down and a dragon was destroying everything and everyone in sight. Nothing was ever easy, Sanguine mused. And that's where I'm going to end that. And you know what, Fredo? I think that was really well written, actually. Ooh. For a Ooh. fanfic, I think that was really well written. That was interesting. Yeah, uh, it was. A Do you know what? I'm gonna. Take. I'm actually gonna come back and read the rest of it later. <laughs> I was like, I'm actually quite into it. <laughs> I'm gonna link it into the chat in case you want to know, because I literally just got, I got like halfway through chapter one. But yeah, I thought that was quite interesting. I liked it. What did you think of it, Freddo? <laughs> it was um definitely well written. Uh, it was well written. Quite I really interesting. Like you go, you come across some fanfics that are really badly written, but this one, yeah, okay, the themes are really out there and bizarre, but it was well written. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. And it was written by Mackie96. And uh, he's the Daedric Prince of... What? I don't even know who Sanguine is. The Bottery and stuff. Oh, okay. He's, uh, he's basically the drunk. I'm Daedric really... Naughtiness. I'm really, really bad when it comes to ESO law, so I might have to ask Friday questions during this. You know all about the law and I don't. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Right, it's my turn to write up and read something. Um, yeah, let's hear it ready. What should I read first? You know what? Let's do the Friends one first. So I think this is the one I'm most interested in reading you. Okay. Okay. So, this doesn't have a title. Um, this is a anonymous piece that one of my friends sent me they wrote back in 2013 uh, i don't know they not told me if they wrote this ironically or unironically so yeah, eight years it's just ago. now this is bad the other one was good but this is just this is really bad oh no we like the we like do you know what like maybe it's not that bad oh <laughs> i read I, I kind it of, i kind of like things when people think they're bad like it makes it sometimes it makes it more fun Right, okay. <clears throat> it was a long, cold day in Skyrim. <laughs> I can't believe I have to read this bit out. I was freezing my big balls in the cold snow. <laughs> 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 uh, I needed shelter, I thought, as I walked through the coldness, the ice and dead balls I killed by enchanted Daedric Axe. I walked into a cave and found something odd. It looked like a crystal ball. I frowned and picked it up, staring into it. Inside was a city. I shrugged and put it in my pocket. Um, eventually, I come home to Lake Fiume and I open the door to see Lydia. <laughs> I decided to punch her in the face and take her lunch money. <laughs> I spat on her face and said, You are dumb cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I then went into my trophy room and put the ball on the shelf. I smile and think about what I want to do next, then I thought it. I want to kill a Daedric god. It was a late night in the Thalkry forest. Birds were chirping, so I climbed up a tree and put my teeth around its head, eating it. I laugh and smile. I like eating birds. They taste good. <laughs> Very good, especially when you barbecue them like in KFC. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> anyway, I heard chanting and following, followed, followed it. It was some hersing cultist. The cultist looked at me and started shouting, Dragonborn, quick, run. But I didn't let them escape. I stabbed them and kicked one of their heads around like a football, like I was Rain Rooney, yes. my mic in a minute, it's just so funny. <sighs> I did a song for her scene. He came, 
as a ghost stag like last time said what you want, so I stab him and kill him. He dead forever. Now I'm happy. <laughs> See I told you you'd be sad up to hurt and he dies. Nobody I did what I wanted. Thing. And now it was time to kill more Daedra gods. I went back to home to Lavi and saw Lydia cooking. Good I thought, a <laughs> woman belonged in the kitchen. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Who is this friend, Freddy? <laughs> um. Uh. A friend. <laughs> I wrote this back in 2013. I've lost where I was now. Um, uh, Lydia was cooking in the kitchen yeah, like a good oh. wife. <laughs> I went to open my fridge and found some beer. I didn't have beer, and then my wolf pet walked over to me. So I picked it up and went to the roof. <laughs> I kicked it off and watched it fall to its death. I laughed and said, Lydia, pick it up and cook it for me, bitch. <coughs> what the actual she knew, she knew her place and did so. She picked it up and put it into the stew. I then smacked in the face and laughed. <laughs> um, I like to beat Lydia, it was funny. This is the best bit. This bit. <sighs> I went and noticed the crystal ball glowing, so I picked up and fell asleep. <laughs> when I woke up, I was in Fallout New Vegas. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so I just go mur and murder people and become a god. And then I went back to Skyrim. They were all proud of me. I killed everyone in Skyrim, including Lydia, and then became a god. The end. Oh, well that was very interesting and different. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Poor, <laughs> poor Lydia. Poor Stina, poor Lydia, yeah. I'm not the biggest Lydia fan, but still, man. Poor Lydia. She's like a slave. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, poor girl, she got smacked up and then the wolf got dropped off her roof. <laughs> okay, the next one I'm reading, I don't know if I'm going to read all of it because even though it's only one chapter, it's quite long. So I'll see how long it goes on for. It's called Little Raven. Um, so, it's about one of the companions from Whiterun in Skyrim, I think. Which one? The werewolf dude. Uh, yeah, you do realise all the companions are werewolves, so that's a bit... I'll yeah. find out who in a sec. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm pregnant! Farkas what? <laughs> Farkas immediately halted his actions. Had he truly heard her correctly? What? His wife giggled, seemingly amused at her husband, shocked. I'm pregnant, love. A course to process. You're having a baby? Darling, I'm having your baby. Well, shit. That wasn't something a man heard every day. <laughs> he wouldn't admit it. But it took him a solid minute to, figure, to fully process Alessia's words. In truth, he really shouldn't be surprised. They had been married for almost a year now and they had a regular sex life. Though if he had to put gold on it, he would probably say it happened during his last heat. Werewolves experience a heat once every six months, and he had spent his last one with his wife. Farkas had been surprised at how long she was able to keep up with him despite not being a werewolf. Do you know what? This confuses me though. Why is he on heat? Because he's a man. Well, I want to know if he's doing that horrible act as a werewolf or not. Yeah, but he's a man. Oh, and? Yeah, but male wolves don't go into heat. Only female wolves go into I heat. I don't really want to he, know. He oh. had already enjoyed being a married man, but not having to spend his heats alone was icing on the sweet roll. <laughs> his recent heat had been shorter than usual, but he supposes the wolf part of him must have known that they had successfully mated. Sweet Mara, but she truly was his mate now. He knew that as the months would pass, her stomach would grow and everyone would see. They would see the dragonborn pregnant with his child. 
this wonderful woman had opened herself to him and he was lucky to drown in her. Not only but the other werewolves would smell his scent on her. <laughs> they would truly know she was his mate. Not only his wife but mother of his child. He reached out a hand and gently placed it against his wife's ab abdomen. There was no visible bump but it did feel a bit different to him. Alessia placed a hand over her husband, sighing contentedly as they leaned into each other. The children had been ecstatic when their parents told them of Alessia's pregnancy. Lucia wanted a baby sister, while Alessan wanted a brother. <laughs> of course, their mother explained to them that they wouldn't know if the child was a boy or a girl until they were born. She was due by the end of Morning Star, so they had plenty of time to plan for the baby's arrival. Gods! She would have to speak with Ulfric about possibly renovating the house to make room. Ulfric if you want to know, Morning Star is January. Very good, thank you. <laughs> Ulfric was her friend. She wouldn't deny that, but it seemed like he, along with the rest of Skyrim, seemed too eager to please her. Yes, she is the granddaughter of Martin Septim, therefore the, a descendant of Talos, but that didn't mean she doesn't want to be treated as a as an equal. She thought that when she married Falkas, people would treat her as an outsider anymore. Unfortunately, she still had to remind some drunken bastards that her very strong Nordic husband would tear them in half if they ever laid a finger on her. Ever since their wedding, Alessia had noticed that her husband had become significantly more territorial when it came to her and the children. While at times it could be a bit much, she was always grateful of his drive to protect not just her, but their adopted children as well. Both Alessia and Farkas agreed to wait until her pregnancy was noticeable before sharing the news with anyone outside the family. They told Vilkas when he came to visit, and were able to convince him not to tell the other companions. He had a problem with this, as it was their announcement to make to entice the children to keep the secret she promised them each a hundred gold to spend on anything they pleased. The children shared an excited look before eagerly agreeing. So when the time came she chose to go to Ulfric first. After all she owed him an explanation for her absence from the court for the past few months. She was able to hide her bump with a thick enough cloak but still walked with a brisk pace to the palace of kings. The castle was looking better since Ulfric could hide cleaning staff from the Grey Quarter. The staff was entirely made up of Donmar women. It reminded Alessia of home. Archmage Leor had welcomed the Donmar refugees into the college with open arms. Her grandmother offered them opportunities within the college as well, as a thieves guild. Or rather those who couldn't join the college all received mysterious letters by someone claiming to be the Grey Fox. As a result, Alessia had grown beside several Dummer men and women. The high population of Dummer in Windham almost made it feel like home. She happened upon one of the new maids when she entered the hall, the Dummer offering to take her cloak. She saw the hesitance, is the Breton, and smiled, I don't really understand this sentence, is the Breton, and smiled reassuringly. Don't worry, most of the staff knew the moment we found you sick in the study. Congratulations, by the way. Alessia blushes, handing her cloak over to the Dharma. Thank you. I'm going to skip forward a little bit because it's just literally her talking to fucking servants for about an hour. <laughs> Do the dishes, peasant. So I'm going to skip forward because, uh... Yeah, it's kind of boring. <laughs> she knew that with pregnancies come hormone shifts. She just hadn't expected to be so horny. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Normally, People have their fucking sex. I know, it's all the time. Normally she knew Farkas would be all too happy to help her, but with her recent developments she wasn't sure. Alessia's had to inform far, far too many Nordic men that yes, you can have sex when pregnant, their penis will not hurt the baby. <laughs> <laughs> racial physiology disgusting. <laughs> that's disgusting <laughs> that's just wrong <laughs> I hate this story man. I hate it it's really weird it's weird it's such a weird story it's so short as well 
And to be fair, race <laughs> physiology was incredibly complex to the untrained eye, but she had hoped that common sense would cover the, that area, not in Skyrim apparently. Luckily, she was able to get some advice from the Dhamma. Despite it making her blush, they told her that the words alone would be useless. She would have to make herself irresistible to him. Suvaris had even offered to entertain the children while she got her husband to unwind with her. After Farkas had gone out to hunt, she walked her children over to the Grey Quarter. The Dhamma were always more than happy to entertain her children, and some even wished her luck with her task. She hurried home and began to make preparations for her husband's return. Their house carl had been wise enough to make himself scarce when he caught wind of Alessia's plan. The Nord had left early that morning, claiming he was going to spend the day at Candlelight Hall. Once she found the scented oil she needed, she stripped herself, settled on the bed. She was nearly six months along now, and she certainly showed. The child within her was growing at a seemingly rapid rate. Okay, yeah, we don't need to read that bit. Let me fast forward a bit because that's... I, <laughs> yeah. I can already imagine what that horrible thing <laughs> She jumped a bit when she heard the front door, but relaxed when she heard Farkas greet Miko. She had found the poor dog on her way back from solitude and didn't have the heart to leave him alone in the wilderness. Luckily for her, Alison had taken to the dog immediately and begged her to let him keep Mark. Miko. Farkas had made an offhand comment about the boy needing a dog and their son had hugged them both before his attention was solely on his new companion. She heard his heavy footsteps coming up the stairs and moved to prop herself on the pillows. When he opened the door to their bedroom, it looked like he was about to say something when his eyes focused on her. She couldn't help but smirk a bit as he unceremoniously dropped his bag, a loud thud the hunt must have been good as he continued to stare at her something wrong husband she said as a blush crept up on her face Farkas swallowed hard you're uh not wearing any clothes <laughs> indeed i'm not do they not fit anymore wait what um no darling i'm actually trying to seduce you oh <coughs> pause why well i would like to have sex <laughs> This is probably, if I ever <laughs> had a girlfriend who was an ace, this is probably the exact thing that thing would go down. Except, I would go, he said, get out of my fucking house. He said, why? Good gods, he really could be an ice brain sometimes. She loved it, though. She wouldn't deny that. There are times during a woman's pregnancy where she experiences an increased libido. Another pause. Fuck, because I'm horny. Yeah, I think I got that. Are you sure we... We can, well, you know. As if to emphasise, he gestured to her the rather large form. <laughs> God. Unless he has suppressed the urge to sigh. Yes, love, I'm sure. He paused to think for a moment before shrugging. Okay, well that was easier than I thought it would be. I'm leaving it now, because after that, it's just like three paragraphs and she even says like this was really rushed but yeah again I'll link it below <laughs> right. so what did you think of that one <laughs> I hated it it was really weird isn't it a weird one it it's really strange sex, it's basically a whole story that. about some woman getting pregnant by a werewolf who was apparently on heat but I don't really understand because he's a man and male wolves don't go on heat yeah but he's also a giant monster werewolf so yeah know. but going on heat means that you're like ready to get pregnant i don't understand how he is on heat because he's a boy you know i hate sticks and sex <laughs> fucking disgusting yeah. kind of it wasn't graphic yeah but still sex was disgusting <laughs> all right which is your one next we've got sheer Gorf's children Oh, exciting. I've not actually read those these ones. I just skimmed to try and make sure they were okay. Uh, okay, so first we have the note from the author. Alright, you have to understand two things for reading this one. This is somewhat based on a dream I had too. Is it is all in it is all 
it's a shit post, so don't be offended if it breaks if I break law. It is a shit post, which means we can call it shit, so let's go. Way back, back in the evil year of 2020, there are two sisters, they're both under the name Cassie and Melania. At a time they're chilling with their family of mother, father and younger sibling, also don't forget the dog. Woof woof. <coughs> they're both slightly bored, but all was good, the sun was shining, cars were winning just fine, and the dog was getting run over. He was getting in trouble for getting into the trash. Suddenly, the entire bloodline of the family, including the dog, flashed red and drove as if it was Minecraft, effectively dying. The oof was heard all over the world. What? I'm getting confused. What? So they all died. <laughs> as if the universe itself was feeding. An oof was heard all over the world, as if the universe itself reappeared for what happened. Cassie and Alania just stood there, not knowing what happened to their entire family, a dead silent for a moment, along with everyone else who will slash kill commanders into oblivion. <laughs> what, what the hell just happened, Alania asked. Uh, I think God is punishing you for stealing granola bars, Cassie said it um, <laughs> nonchalantly. No! Yeah, Alania cried out from the floor. What did group have to die because I stole granola bars? She looks up towards the sky. Please bring the group back. He was one of my two friends. You're group saying a bit... You sound a bit fuzzy, Fred, a tiny bit. I don't know why. Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Um, group suddenly respawned and ran back over to Alania. Oh, thank you, whoever did that. Oh, what the fuck? Suddenly, the FBI came riding over their giant black trucks. FBI, open up, they ruled. Even though, literally, everyone was outside. <laughs> they climbed out their trucks. I thought they literally just got out of their trucks and asked, Okay, who executed this slash kill command? They asked, not me. Cassie, yeah, I've not wanted to go to jail again. <laughs> oh, press F to pay respects. Your old family is dead, the FBI agent said. Cassie's pupils were large and black coat eyes. Oh no! The fuck? <laughs> right, uh, that was part one. Uh, yeah, go to part two because it was pretty short. Let's part two, please. Right. It has been three days since someone had to kill the entire family of the two sisters. They were heartbroken and because they weren't legal adults yet, they had to be thrown into adoption centre along the dock. <laughs> they sat looking at the floor, depressed out of their mind. Even the dog stared at the door floor, too sad to chew on a bone. The only thing they could bring was a few bags of clothes and items. And so they were also hella bored. Yo, do you think we'll be adopted by the same person or it will be separated again? Cassie asked, too oblivious to the fact that was not a good question to ask. Alania glared at her. Cassie got very confused. We should also point out Cassie can't really figure out what is inappropriate to say. It wasn't mainly because she's autistic and that isn't even a joke. <laughs> right then, look. Autistic protagonist. <laughs> They sat for a few more minutes, being more I sad than normal. I saw someone busted for the adoption of the Well, it makes sense. So I'm <laughs> like that. That's probably how I back in this situation, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> to be fair, I never even re read that earlier. That's news to me. <laughs> I <don't laughs> heads... Sorry, carry on, Freddo. <laughs> Their heads snapped up, curious and a bit wide, but who would walk in and straight up nearly break the door? Tourist. Just who happened to be surprised to say this, a man with a grey beard, even greyer hair, was the one who entered. He was wearing an intricately designed pair part of it, laced with gold and hints of green. He seemed to give an air of madness and a bit of danger as well. However, the most bizarre thing about it was, they were golden and slit. Feline. <laughs> he looked around at the few people in the room, other than his sisters and their dog. There was an attendant lady and a kid. Well, I've done pretty much nothing but play Fortnite on his phone the entire time they've been there. Well, he's not getting adopted. 
but that was probably the reason he had been there so long. Be safe, don't play Fortnite all day. <laughs> oh look, a doggy! The man yelled out in his Scottish accent and made a beeline for group. Wait, wait, wait! Nah. car is not Scottish. He's Irish. Yeah. <laughs> Did fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Explained and pet him. Group was pretty friendly. Rather they allowed this bizarre man who wasn't Scottish to pet him. <laughs> I want these children. He announced. I'm sorry, that's not how it works. The lady there said he got up. So he said, I thought it did. Oh well, then all right. How's it work? Yes. But you can't boldly announce they're yours. <laughs> really? I can't. Who told you the emperor? A talking tree? No, don't tell me. I'd rather not know. This is a fun day. Sir, <laughs> it is the law, she said, a bit frightened. Hmm. Well, check the law again. It might have changed. Maybe it didn't. Maybe it changed for me. Or was it another digit prince? We'll check, he said, filled with vigour and zest. Oh, could you give me your name, she asked. He let out a little growl and explained, Sheila Glorath, Daedric Prince of Nernis. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> was all she said, and she typed out typed something onto her computer. Lenny and Cassidy stared at each other in worry, but Sheila Glorath, and then there was Cassidy. Five and nine, this isn't looking up for us, Cassidy <laughs> murmured in response. <laughs> well... They said, of way more than hit regret. It says here that I grow sure glass and love to do the planes as well as it doesn't feel well done it itself. So I can keep them, he asked. Well, you do have to sign some papers first. Papers? <laughs> sign papers? I guess I can do that. I want to sign it with the blood I always carry with me. You never know, it comes in handy, don't you? He explained with hints of malice. Oh, Cathy wins. Oh, God. Oh, God, Helenia said. The two are mentally panicking. Cassie thought, we'll have to sign some of the blood too. After this show, go off a sign finishing. Signing the papers. He went over to the tutor and said, Okay, now I need you to sign. Cassie and Lenny glanced at each other. YOLO was all Cassie said, being hooked on dead trends and grabbed the pen. <laughs> right then. And I think it's now a large time, because my brain is fried after that. <laughs> That was just How very many strange. chapters and stuff does that one have? Just closed it and now I didn't come back. Um. I'm really interested to know because I, I would like actually probably want to read the rest of that one as well. Uh. 15 chapters. Wow. Yeah, that was kind of interesting. So Shia Gorath is adopting these two children. It's a very interesting universe, this uh, <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. <laughs> Thank you. All right, then, I'll read my next one. My next one is a Fenorian fanfic. Oh, no. There's actually loads of Fenorian fanfic, like so many. I didn't even read through all of them. I just picked one of the first ones I came across. Uh, so that's no offence to Midnight Rose who wrote it. It was just one of the first ones that I came across. So that's why I picked it. <laughs> and I don't know how to pronounce this word at the beginning, but I'm going to try. So we had entered... Tzanganalis Tower. Tzanganalis Tower. I think that's how you say it. Tzanganalis Tower. Where Fen, in brackets, Fenorian, had been taken. Lyris and me had been led to the tower by a werewolf alley of Fen. Oh, this is taking place in the main quest when he gets kidnapped by that mad scientist bloke here and helps us. Upon entering, I picked up a paper on nether route. We heard a horrid scream. I clasped Fen's flask in my hands. Fenorian. Agonised screaming. Lyris Lightenborn. <laughs> that was Fen. We need to keep moving. I nodded and we took off. Agonised screaming. <laughs> <laughs> as, we, as we made our way to the experimentation chamber to rescue him. I can hear that vampiric bastard in another voice. Fenorian. Ah no. Why you do this to me? Exarch. The Ashen Lord crafted the plan. 
I am simply the architect of his tools. Now feel, feel free to scream when I peel back your flesh and apply this tool. Rada El Saran, whoever that is. We, Rada El Saran. We have what we need. In his last moments, let him truly understand the power of the Grey Host. A shame he could not be recruited to our noble cause. Ezark The machine will finish him momentarily, my lord. Rada Al Saran. Finish your work here, Then join me in the keep. You must bear witness when we make our move. Ezark Of course, Rada Al Saran. I am eager to see the power of our ultimate harrow storm. Fenorian, tortured sobbing. <laughs> Hearing those bastards hurt Fen, it was ripping me apart. I became a different person. One bastard was gone, but that undead bastard was still there, about to hurt him again. I didn't give the bastard a chance. I used a teleport strike and knocked the tool from his hands. Lyris ran in seconds after I did and helped but I was taking down myself I was light on my feet and dodged all of his power attacks when he was on his last limb I took my shot and took Lyris's axe slamming that heavy hunk of metal into his back clear through his chest as I took my twin daggers and took off his head I screamed still on an anger high as I panted hearing Fen groan in pain Still, I snapped for a murderous rage into tears as I ran to him. Fenorian, it's too late for me. Lyris Titanborn, Fen's delirious. See if you can free him. As I approached him to turn off the torture device, he spoke. Fenorian, go warn solitude. I refused as I struggled. Finding the switch, I hit the thing, hard freeing him as I went to him on my knees in front as I tried to make sure he was alright but unable to touch him or he'd be in pain you should have left me go warn solitude we'll all go tell me what you heard Fenorian Ezark and Radalala talked freely while they tortured me they're planning some sort of assault on solitude a massive harrow storm you're hurt how can I help you Fenorian I need blood <laughs> But I won't drink it from an unwilling person, dot dot dot. In this state, even with a willing participant, I didn't trust my restraint. If only I had my flask. Here's your flask. I found it in your lodgings in Dusktown. My flask, thank you, Bella. <laughs> Radarilla is the one they call the Ashen Lord, leader of the Grey Host. He and Zizi went into the nearby sanctum to talk. I had a few words, map plan, but I couldn't make out the rest. Then we should search Zizi's sanctum. Yes, yes, once I take a long drink from my flask, I'll join you. I helped him as we walked to the sanctum. He drank, his healing kicking in as he was becoming better. Inside the sanctum, I stayed by his side as he walked slow. Lyris Titanborn, take your time, I've been through a lot. Fenorian, they did what they, whatever they wanted, I couldn't stop them. Exarch Shiji was insane, but he was also a genius. If he kept records, they'll be in here. I only left him as I searched the room, finding what we needed. I showed him what we found. Fenorian, you risked so much to rescue me. Why would you, why would you do such a thing? With all we've been through, from kidnapped to the Harry Storm, we've grown close, Fenorian. I will never stop coming to save you. I blushed as I realised I just almost told him I cared for him. Uh, and we need your help to devise a defence against the Harry Storms. I had a lead on that, but Zizi <laughs> captured me before I could finish looking into that. He smirked, sensing my blush and happily focusing on other subjects. There is Titanborn. Come on, Fen. Princess Savannah herself requested your presence at the Blue Palace. Fenorian. I don't believe I'm very good company right now. Lyris Titanborn. Come on, Fen. We'll help you through this. He nodded as we left that horrid place and headed for the Blue Palace. We told Svana the ordeal we were going through and she spoke to Fen. Fredo, is this just a recap of the quest? This is just an entire recap of Greymoor. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally word for word what happens. Apart from the <laughs> we can get his head chopped off with Lewis's axe, but this is literally just Greymoor. 
It's not very interesting. I've been, I've done this before. Yeah, me too. Okay, so that's it. But there are lots of parts to this, I believe. Two parts, actually. So, yeah. But I think they've added little romance bits, like when she's blushing and thinking he's like... I don't know how it ends, so you can have a look yourself. I'm going to link that one as well. So, Freddo, it's your turn. Alright, this is going to be a good one. I changed my name to avoid my ex and accidentally saved the world. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> so the summary is, being trapped in cold up for thousands of years left none of us slightly mad. That wasn't about to stop him from taking a trot to the to escape. Tamriel in the second era is a wild romp, even if he, a lot of people are very silly, and as Chris do things to hit, and most importantly, staying very far away from the next wife who murdered him. Lovely. <clears throat> yeah, it sounds fun. So, um, I don't know how long I've been called her, but the last thing I remember is like, the face of my friend, or those I had fought my friends at the least, right as they portrayed me, where the trial <laughs> got deeper than the knife they used to sacrifice me to the god of brutality. <laughs> day in, day out, I listen to the moans of my fellow prisoners and the snarls of Daedra jailers. Sometimes they haul us out to work to the forges, under the lash of the slave masters. We spend much of our time locked up. The Daedra don't like it when I talk back, but I do it anyway. They can't do shit to me, I'm already dead. They keep, <laughs> gonna keep torturing me no matter what I say I do. I take joy in my eternal damnation by taking any opportunity I can make a terrible joke at Daedra's expense. <laughs> I mean, there's one way to do it. I'm gonna die. Do it taking the piss out of Daedra. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> it's just funny thinking of someone like just being in hell like, yeah it's fine, I'm quite happy being here, I just take the piss out of the loose guys. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, good girl. <laughs> um, right, what was I? Um, that was. Throughout it all, I've tried to hold on to who I am. Details of my life have become hazy. I still remember my name, Indra Nerevar. I was a great warrior once, even if I no longer quite remember the details of any wars involved in. It has all blurred together into a long stream of violence and emotion. I never stopped hoping for escape or dreaming of finding Moonshadow, the realm of Zora, Lady of Dawn and Dusk, where my soul should have been destined to go upon death. At this point, I would be happy to see the Shivering Isles, the Mad God's realm. I was I'm clearly mad now, or even if I wasn't before. Being a Zora's favourite did nothing to spare me from being in prison here, so I don't know what that favour counted for in the end. Something shakes me to full alertness. The sounds outside of the cell I'm being held in have changed. Prison riot? An escape attempt? I don't know what they're trying to accomplish, but none of us have anything to lose. I rush to the cell to grip the bars, test and see if I can't get something loose. Movement. A woman comes into view, a Nord looking stronger, fresh and lively. Evo. I don't know if I should read it because this, this is like the last one. This is literally just like recounting what what happens in the tutorial of Cold Harbor. Is like, it? I'll carry on yeah, anyway. Let's see. Um, I know. That's where I am. Uh, okay. I call up to her. Hello. Could you do me a favor? And get me out of here, please. Are you right? She's just coming up to the door. I'm opting <coughs> for. The Nord method of block picking. The names and the rest hope for both our sakes so you've still got some fight in you, high elf. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's Trump. The names and the I'm glad for assistance, but I'm not a high elf, I tell her much from my tail. Nourish raised an eyebrow. You look like one. What are you then? I'm a chimer, I say. Nourish the jewels dropped. You've been in Kohama that long? What's a chimer? What's a chimer? Um, basically a Chimer are a race of elves who became the Dark Elves. They're basically, they're, sort, they're, they're similar to the High Elves, but mm. shorter, and they're golden and stuff. And they basically got, uh, how it goes in the creation myth is they got cursed by Azora. Okay. And they now have, um, because what the, 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 um, the tribunal did, you know, when they, um, they got godhood, Azora punished the Daedra. Not the Daedra, the, the Charla either, and turn them into the Dumna. Okay. So, um, I'm afraid I don't really have a frame of reference for that, how long it's been, I admit, but 
Why do you say that? What's always the difference about being a card of tribe? What happened to my people from North killed us off? North killed off us, didn't they? Honestly, I won't blame you. We kind of had it coming. <laughs> That's expensive. No, no, we didn't kill you off, Lyris assures me. I'm no historian, but Pure has been thousands of years, and the trauma are all turned into dark elves. Dunma shakes her head. Come on, we have to get out of here. You can find uh, more once to get back to Nern if you can. I will also say, for the people listening, I am much more a uh, person who reads my head than out loud, so. Um, I nod. <laughs> that will require getting out of here in the first place. All oh, this has all been a moot point, let's get moving then. That's what I like to hear though, it says, let's see about getting your weapon. Ah, here we go. The other soldier and I collect some weapons that are arming themselves. And the corridors are littered with dead Dra Daedra. <laughs> their bodies. Well, actually, no, that's inaccurate because if you kill a Daedra in their own realm, then they can't reform. So that's inaccuracy in the law. Really? But, yeah, if you kill a Daedra, if you kill a Daedra in Tamriel, they will reform. But if you kill one in their Daedric realm, they are dead. They won't come back. Oh, yeah, and the corridor are littered with dead Daedra. Their bodies will just dissolve back into the stuff from Divian to real from a later date, which again, that's false, because they're in their own realm. <laughs> Not quickly enough to affect <laughs> what happened. I hereby name this weapon Pickles, I declare. Pickles. <laughs> Lyris wonders. I always name my weapons, I say. But why Pickles? I always name them something ridiculous. Alright, Lyris says dubiously. Well, I'm not common on what being in Colbert so long as done with your sanity, so as long as you can still manage to hit Daedra with pickles. Let's see how it does in the fight, shall we? Come on. I follow along after her and get the chance to test out my new weapon with some Daedra on the way. It's gratifying to find out that I have not forgotten how to fight. Just as so much as it found me to strike back at these fetches. I want to just spit in that eye for eternity and a half, even if it fails horribly. Been worth all the invisible torture that will wait. The legion of the old man comes to us. I look at Lyris and Puzzlement. Who was that? What was he talking about? The prophet, Lyris breathes. The very wise man. And he's also Dumbledore. And if he thinks he can help me, I'll trust his judgment. He's our best chance of getting out of this horrible place. As you say, <coughs> do you know where we're going? I think we might be able to get to his cell through that way. She points towards the door. Trust in her direction for lack of absolutely better ideas. I thought after an occasionally kill a Daedra with my axe. At her direction, I run up and hit a giant eyeball with said axe as well, although I'm not sure what good it might do. But I, personally, I don't like fanfics that just recount things I've already gone through, yeah, rather just the new I agree trail. that, isn't you? Okay, we've got one left each. Okay, this one's called Love. How would you say this? Is it a Druga or a Draugr? Oh no. So I think it says love drog or love drug, but I don't know which one. Drog, what, what's it about? Please don't tell me this is a love story about drog, because that's fucking disgusting. Yeah, it's, it's, this is pretty grim. Sorry. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> it's no, very, I'm it's not very short. My necrophilia, <laughs> man. It's, it's very short. And I will be cutting this one off quite early. Okay. Oh, Skyrim geez. is more cold crypt and living dead than anything else like seriously 99% of the frozen wasteland is underground burials and walking skeletons it's crazy there's no doubt that most of the enemies ye poor old dragonborn encounters are said skeletons in said burials but why the loot the reward for retrieving hidden treasures the glory if you can call it that but what else Certainly not sexy time with a Druga. No, definitely not. But sometimes it is the best treasures we find when not searching for them. A, eh? A, eh? yay, nay, okay. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, the tombs of Skyrim are pretty boring. Vez is terrifying because they were filled with Druga. It felt like hours that the Dragonborn, a lean dark elf of masculine proportions, had been wandering the endless tunnels of one such tomb, and he hadn't even seen a druga, just decayed skeletons. It was dark, dank, and the only sound was when he had to occasionally clear his throat of all the dust cascading off the rocky ceiling. 
Needless to say, this was no real adventure, and adventure was the Dragonborn's middle name. Not really. <laughs> he was considering turning back when he swore he heard the scraping of boned feet on dirty tunnel floors. Finally, he thought, turning to face the sound and inadvertently triggering a tripwire. A sudden parade of darts showered over him, forcing him to duck and block with his dingy iron shield. For the love of... Before he could finish, a dart flew right by his arm, skimming his dark flesh just a bare bit. He immediately re reacted by pulling his shield up to cover the wound, which in turn left him more vulnerable. Here and there, darts pelted him. He lost control for a moment, twitching and turning with each new pain. It was a bit of chaos, and oh, Azora forbid the darts be poisoned, but the dragonborn didn't feel dizzy or sick, not yet. Well, well, a rattling voice broke through the man's frenzied thoughts. He looked up just as the last dart struck his knee to see who or what was speaking to him, and he kind of wished he hadn't. A grotesque and skeletal figure stood before him in rags, dead eyes gleaming, a piercing blue, a druga, a female druga by the looks of her antique oh, jewellery no. clinging to her wrist and neck, oh. a lean, fragile build, but she wasn't beaut or beauty. Drippy moss clung to her ribs and shoulders. There was something dark and slimy in her left eye socket, and a foul odour clung in the air around her. It would appear she had just crawled out of a scummy bog or the like. <laughs> the dragonborn was speechless for a moment, but quickly regained composure and attempted to stand up before the creature. Alas, he was weak and slid back down against the dirty wall. His arms were too wounded for him to make a quick draw with his sword, so that wouldn't work either. He was pretty screwed. <laughs> Going somewhere, the Dragruga crossed her bony arms and maybe glared at him through her hollowed sockets. Why leave so soon? Do you have any idea how lonely and boring it gets down here? There was no response that the dragonborn could possibly think of. It continued, of course not. You're not dead, not buried far below the earth where everyone can forget about you. No family, no siblings, no parents, no lover. Her jaw opened in what might or could have been a smirk, perhaps the shape of laughter. Still, our hero didn't say a thing. He was rolling over the right words in his mind, <laughs> thinking of an escape, but nothing came to his lips. He gazed down for a moment at the crimson liquid creeping down his arms. He wasn't going anywhere. The druga unfolded her arms and, in an unhesitant manner, reached out and lightly touched the gash on the dragonborn's shoulder. The elf cringed at the stinging pain and tried to flatten himself further against the wall. So full, so warm, so alive, I'd almost forgotten what flesh felt like. Somehow, even after all of her own flesh was gone and her body decayed back to nothing, the skeleton woman still had some stank breath which made the dragon bull cringe even more. But what really freaked him out was her next words. The druga reached out and placed both hands on the man's shoulders and whispered, Maybe you can help me feel alive again, yes? Uh, how about no? The dragon ball flung her arms off with what little strength he had left and managed to kick off the side, kick off and slide to the left. But just before he could make another a standing attempt, the druga caught hold of his arms with incredible strength. Damn it, what are you doing? I already told you the creature spoke with some something of humour in her dead voice. You're going to help me feel alive again. It was now that the dark elf wished his adventure in this dank crypt, crypt was like any other one. It was now that he hoped and prayed to any higher deity that would listen to him, that this was just a nightmare. Well, it kind of still was. The strength of rot got stronger and stronger, and the dragonborn was tempted to pinch his nose to relieve himself of the horrid odour, but it felt unfitting, and the druga still had his wrists anyway. But she spoke no more. Instead, her actions revealed the horrendous desire she had tucked away in that non-existent light. <laughs> Slowly, like a sabre cat, Tez deer, she let go of the dragonborn and began fondling with her ripped and torn garments. Please, no. Gods, no. 
but the plea went unheard. As <laughs> the skeleton continued stripping herself, she was more naked than the day she was born, right down to her pelvic bone. Just as she was peeling off another ragged piece of cloth, she suddenly stopped and appeared taken back, as if she had just realised. I, I see that I'm nothing more than bones, but if I can't pleasure like I used to, maybe I can still pleasure you and feel alive doing it. And the following silence was filled with so much awkward that you could never fit it into a description. Still unable to move any of his limbs without dealing with the searing pain that would follow, the dragonborn remained trapped against the crypt wall. His heart raced, but not with anticipation. And I'm not going to read any more. Because it, fuck? Because it starts to get pretty fucking... Uh, yeah, we don't. nobody wants to read the rest of that. Well, you can read the rest of it if you want to. There's really not that much more left. But uh, it gets pretty uh, X-rated after that point. What the fuck is wrong with this author? <laughs> we have one left, Fredo. I'm going to read our last one. I'm looking forward oh, yeah, to it. Just, I'm just having a, a, a moment of like thinking of what the fuck is wrong with people. <laughs> so who this... sits down? Who sits down at the table and goes, Oh, not the world is missing. A story about a dragon trying to fuck the dragon ball. <laughs> Undead form. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> What's what the fuck? Uh, it is it's very entertaining. I actually looked at this person's other fanfics they've written, and they're all insane. Mm, By the way, the I'm person asexual. Wrote, I hate sex, but the person you write this wrote Jeez. that is called Satan Spiky Thong. <laughs> so they're probably a freak. <laughs> Right. Okay, let's read What Have I Become? A Skyrim slash Elder Scrolls Online fanfiction. Do keep in mind that Elder Scrolls Online takes place a thousand years before Skyrim, so let's see how this connects. Mm. Right. <clears throat> My family has been a little on the rough side, living in a shack south of solitude. <laughs> Not the best way to live my life. My brother hunts, but he's always run off. After Dad died, he never acted the same. Mother, mum, she just sticks with alchemy and sells potions to travellers. Not much people in these parts, but usually it's noble man travelling to solitude. Well, then there's me. I do the housework and keep my mother in stock with ingredients. Most of the time it's me and my mum. It's like my brother is never here. I'm sure he's doing more than punching out there. He'd be gone for days and then when he is here, it's been for a day, if that, then takes off again. I keep telling Mother I'm sure he's up to more than just hunting. Or she says I'm overreacting and need to go to bed. So eventually I, I just gave up. So eventually... I, I think that's an error. So it says so eventually A just gave up. I think that's supposed to say an I rather than A. So eventually I just gave up on the subject. The holds don't really allow us to live anywhere. Well, we are the only ones left with dwarves blood. Oh my god, here we go. <laughs> what happened? What happened? But they have dwarf blood in them. Well, I'm not even going to go into this today. I could go into hours speaking that once. <laughs> makes no sense. My father's dwarf. The dwarves are not fond of our race, especially since my mother married a dwarf. How are... What, what is she? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to read. I can't. I can't. Fuck to. <laughs> I, I'm not going to go into questioning this today. Okay. My father was a dwarf, the north's not from me, yeah. I'm half elf and half dwarf, the culture is dying, they don't care, and won't help. M Merilada, will you fetch some firewood for dinner? I nodded to my mother, and don't wander off. That's the wrong version of wander, but okay. <laughs> Dangerous being to walk to wander the, wo the woods. We know well of that, mother. I said, smiling lightly. I stepped inside and looked around. My brother had yet to return, it was nearly dark. I placed my cloak over my head and walked into the forest. <laughs> Stars were starting to glean and the beautiful moving lights started to appear. I gathered a few sticks and I felt them to make sure they were dry enough to burn. Move it, filth! I heard a man's voice at the distance. I looked up and saw a light up ahead. 
set of sticks down and crouched over to was when I was close enough I lowered down my lock. Laura filth, I'll have every one of your clings slaughtered, the man she yelled. He seemed to have a cage and someone was inside it. I'm not sure what it was. I've heard of Dramor, but I've never encountered one. I crept closer. The man had uh, other men around. One was making a fire. <laughs> I'm losing my voice. Another was standing by the cage with a Dramor in it. I'm in oblivion to the magic to catch a Dramor. Most importantly, one that... 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 <laughs> looks like a mord. Tell me, filth, the man stuck his hurt. What is your kind of planning? I've told you to draw more grab the sword. You'll get what's coming, oh great high king. You know what I have thought though? This could technically be in a second era, because I don't believe it's said if this isn't a second or fourth era so far, so... It's not a third, really. I th I'm going to assume this is the second era, because the high king. But I mean, it's also got a dwarf. Um, <laughs> an elf hybrid, so I don't know why I'm looking for logic. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't have looked for logic in this, I I've think. told you to... Okay. What a waste, the master thrown his sword down. All of a sudden, I felt my hair being spoiled. I screamed, let me go. Hey, you mother, she found this one by crying. I can't push on me. What's the chart? What's your name chart? I looked up. My pub hue sparking. Never know I'd had one. Hmm. He tries to turn my around his back face. Yes. <laughs> What do you want with me? I asked stand up. He stood there while Adam faced me, say, One home child. I feel it's a great walk coming soon, said softly. Did he have to do the deal that Kimoy asked? Yes, Tayyan answered. Yes, he gave me everything. Use it well. Don't let him control you. Kimoy intoxicated. I, <laughs> I nodded and took the dagger and then I went home. I never liked Dramora, but some are pleasant. I believe everyone needs a chance. If there is to be a war, then it must be because the gods are angry with us. I'm losing my voice. Are you? Yeah, I arrived home to see that no one was there. Where is everyone? I didn't see my brother's boy. He must, so he must have been home. Then I noticed blood on the floor. What happened when I left? I turned around and went back outside, but I was only gripped by a knocked head. I blacked out the pain. I can read the rest if you want, Freddy. It's fine. It's almost over anyway. I fluttered my eyes open and groaned. My head still hurts. I looked around to see if I was in a cage. What's going on? I yelled sitting up. It certainly didn't look like Skyrim. Everything was ghostly like. And I noticed people hauling me in the cage. But they weren't exactly human. I noticed someone riding a horse in front of me. You can all see. Turn around. All I saw was light eyed, blue glowing eyes. And looked forward down. Excuse me, why? I was thinking you're in oblivion. I was confused. Why oblivion? Oblivion is nothing. How was I? A mortal surviving here. The man raised down. Everyone stopped. He lifted off. Bring her to my route. Who is this guy? The men sighted him up my cage. It's my chance. When the gate opened, I jumped out, stabbed the man, and I ran over to the other man. I attempted to slam him in the head, but he don't know I'm going to Foolish girl. Don't even know who she's dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> who are you? I said. I'm Alzane, the Daedric Prince of Lust and Perversion. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So you just made up a Daedric Prince? What a load of shit. <laughs> right, that's the end. I'm pretty um, sure I'm pretty sure the Daedric Prince of Lust and Perversion locks her up in his castle. Well, that's from chapter two, because that was the end of chapter one. Yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, you can continue reading that one. I actually recommend reading more of that one because I skimmed through that one earlier and I thought it was amazing. It was my favourite one. I it's like something it. like doesn't make any sense. It's something like she says to him, he locks her up in the he locks her up in his dungeon and he's like she's like, <laughs> Well, okay, yeah, he's a danger prince and he's locked me up in a castle, but you know, I don't know why people are judging him. We don't know who he is, so he might be nice. Like he's not killed me yet, so I'm gonna give him a benefit of a doubt. <laughs> Ignorance. <yes. laughs> it's great. Yeah. So, what did you think of those, Rado? Which one was your favourite? Uh, I think the first one. I think the first one was actually decent. The danger named Desire. No. Yeah. Yeah. Sanguine. That one. One sanguine. Yeah, that was a good one. 
That one was entertaining. That one's I really think my long. Fr my friend's one was really fucking weird, but it was also the funniest. <laughs> I found that the funniest. Yeah, that one was funny. Um, Although Shoe didn't Shoe like... Growth's Children was quite funny. Yeah, it was definitely unique. I didn't like the Fenorium on all the Nerva ones itself, just basically retellings. Like, mm. I don't really like those sort of stories where it's just like, here's the quest that you've played before. Yeah. It's like, okay. I did I'd rather see. just play the quest and read this. I did see a Fenorian one that was set in the future where Fenorian had this like badass car, but I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, and I was just like, it's not really. I didn't realize like I've only done the story in Greymoor once. I didn't realize that was part of the thing. <laughs> Fenorian has a car. Mm. Yeah. So well, maybe if this. One is popular, and we do sign up this again, we'll read that one next time. Yeah, but I would definitely put the links to some of these. Like, the ones I would recommend reading. A Daedra Named Desire, the rest of that one was really good. And the last one that Freddie just uh, read, What Have I Become? That one, I think, is a long one. And also, I think it gets quite interesting in quite a funny way. <laughs> But yeah, that, that was quite fun. What did you think then, Freddy? Did you enjoy it? It was an, an interesting experience. <laughs> there are one, two, three, four, five, six more that I was sent that I didn't uh, read, but I will put them up. Uh, two of them were crossovers between uh, ESO and Dragon Age, so I understand why people sent them to me. One of them was called The Fairy Inquisitor. <laughs> For, um... <laughs> the other one was the Dragonborn Returns, which is about uh, basically the uh, the Dragonborn travels to Thedas for four years, has a Solus romance, comes back, and then Solus turns up in uh, the Elder Scrolls world, and that was quite funny. Uh, the New Apprentice was a really pervy one about uh white run not white run what's it called winterhold uh majors college i was quite sh i was quite shocked about that it's quite a violent romance <laughs> i was like i can't we can't read that it, it's uh pretty wrong but that'll put that <laughs> the lusty argonian maid someone rewrote uh. that that was and then do you know who slope dude is Sloped. Because I don't know who that is. That's one of the reasons I didn't add this story. Because I have no idea who Slope Dude is. But there was one, it was like Slope Dude and the Elder Scrolls Oblivion Adoring Fan. I've got no idea who Slope Dude is. But literally every two seconds it said the Elder Scrolls Oblivion Adoring Fan. And I was like, that's going to be horrible for us to read. Imagine having to say the Elder Scrolls Oblivion Adoring Fan every two seconds. Oh yes, you know, that one, that particular game that's so famous you really need to spell it out every fucking time. Yeah, every time. It was like, the Elder Scrolls Oblivion Adoring Fan sat down and then the Elder Scrolls Oblivion Adoring Fan picked his phone out of his pocket and then the Elder Scrolls what Oblivion Adoring fun? Fan... <laughs> I don't know. But like, it's like that. Like It spells out his name every single time he does anything. But yeah, it's quite interesting. So I will put those ones in the description as well as the ones we read. But yeah, feel free to go and read the rest of them yourself. Let us know what you think. My personal favourite was the last one that Fredo read. Although we didn't get too far into it. But yeah, I really face. enjoyed reading that. I think next time, because my voice is gone. I don't know why it's usually happened, but my voice has decided, you know what? No speaking anymore today. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, but yeah, my favourite was the first one, the Sanguine one. That was definitely the one I think that was the best. Mm. But the funniest one, I think, was the one my friend wrote. Yeah, that Beautiful was masterpiece. I can't wait for the sequel. Yeah, that was crazy. It was really funny. Poor Lydia, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I got fucking beaten up. I got a lunch money taken. <laughs> Who knew Lydia needed lunch money? Uh, apparently you do. <laughs> Oh, uh, so um, what are we gonna do next time then? I don't know. What's... I guess 
me and Fredo will talk about it and come up with two suggestions each and post them in the community so you guys can Indeed. Vote. Another vote. Yes. Um, I will say that um, we do have... I'm not going to say what they are because they're a bit far ahead, but we do have certain ideas for special episodes. So what we're usually mm -hmm. going to do, what we're hoping to do is do a vote and maybe sometimes in between episodes we'll do a special one out of a topic we want to do that's not the vote yeah like for instance Freddy's never seen twilight and we thought that would actually be a really funny thing for us to just do so we might be doing that anyway so we'll paste it in between. yeah so it could be yeah so it might you might get two episodes a month depending on that um there's yeah. certain other topics and stuff i won't spoil what it is yeah. but there's one that's <laughs> not gonna happen for until next year at least yeah, but if we That's fancy something interesting. if we fancy doing something in between, then we will. Yeah, and we'll have <laughs> and uh, if there's something on the vote that we want to do, really want to do, very much interesting, but uh, is one, then we might just do that one sometime as well as the one that's yeah. won the vote. Yeah. But yeah, um, that's it really. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching oh. <laughs> this weird thing. And I hope it didn't offend anybody. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Apart from you who wrote an incest thing about Draga, you're a freak. I didn't sorry, write sorry. it. I didn't say you wrote it, I said the person who wrote it. <laughs> the person who wrote that day, that Draga insert, not into fucking necrophilia yeah. thing, you're a freak. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't want to read the rest of that one. <laughs> so yeah thank you so much for watching ta ta and good night